questions. Thank you for your time. This afternoon, I'm going to take you through an end-to-end -end presentation of our Nimbus portal and integrated cloud document management. As mentioned, I'm recording this session so that if you need to, or if you'd like to share it with other team members or colleagues, you're able to do that. And of course, I'm more than happy to provide a personalised demonstration for um, your firm to address anything specific, any specific requirements that you have. We're starting by running through a couple of slides this afternoon, and please forgive the bing, but that's also part of the presentation, the email notifications. I'm going to go through a couple of slides. The first explaining one of the underlying premises as to why we created Nimbus, and the second set of slides, the current components of Nimbus, and an overview of their functionality. We have represented here a group of accountants, and on the other side, clients. And you all talk to each other. On the firm side, you create documents or product and you save it into your respective document management system. There's another layer of communication on top of that, which is email. And when that communication is laid over the top, you've got multiple uh, contacts at the client end, potentially contacting multiple contacts within the firm. So at any given point in time, there's no clear vision of the current and most up-to-date communication. Implementing Nimbus enables you and your clients to have a central location where all that financially sensitive information from that the client is providing you to prepare their work for them is uploaded into the portal and where you as the firm deliver your end product, financial tax returns, reports via the secure portal. So the client, when they think of your firm, It'll be in the portal, delivered from the portal, out of email, and therefore being delivered by the portal securely. I'm going to run through the current components of Nimbus now. The first is the client workspace. The client workspace enables you and your clients to share documents, to collaborate on a single source document. And what that means is same document can be updated by both parties, so that could be multiple parties within the firm, or that could also include the client or multiple parties at the client. Each time the document saved a new version's on top. You're all familiar with the common ledger. Um, for those of you logging directly into your client's ledgers and updating, checking, etc., we're able to offer that same functionality with documents. We have file conversations. So this is where you're able to have a conversation between the firm and the client or between team members within the firm on a document. Best place to document your queries, any questions or instructions. I'll be demonstrating that today. The second component is the practice management integration. Nimbus is vendor agnostic and integrates with all of the players in the Australian practice management market. And we wish your practice management system to remain the master database of client information. The fields that are available in Nimbus are the client contact fields and any custom or user-defined fields that you use in your practice management system to categorise your clients. So your practice management system remains the master database. Any changes you make there flow through to Nimbus. The next component is digital document signing, which enables you or your clients to sign documents anywhere, anytime from any smart web-enabled device. When clients are sent their first document to sign, our Nimbus system will step them through the process very simply. So even the most basic level computer user will be able to set up a digital signature. Web form checklist is a component that is unique to Nimbus. We've designed um, some 40 
templates that are available to be uh, customised around the standard work type, so company, non-BAS, company trust, BAS, individuals, etc. And the idea is that these checklists are set up once, so your quarterly BAS checklists are set up once, and they go out and are followed up automatically by the system. Checklists can also be utilised for surveying clients post completion of work and for marketing purposes as well. Our next component is email communications. Email communications has two functions. The first is to provide the crafted covering email. So the email going out is your standard wording and instead of attachments to documents, embedded links, secure embedded links through to the documents. The second function of email communications is for newsletters and marketing activities. So you're able to select a list of clients based on criteria that's come from your practice management system and then send out a targeted data mined newsletter as an example. Online appointments, syncs with Outlook and gives you the ability to offer your time via the Nimbus client portal for your clients to book an appointment with you. They can't see when you start, when you finish, what you're doing, who you're doing it with or how long you're doing it for. All they can see is your available time. They're able to send through a meeting request through the system. It comes to you uh, as an invitation, not dissimilar to the invitation for a calendar event and you're able to accept that or propose a new time. I won't be demonstrating this today, but we also have the ability to set up events. We provide, show you how to build banner ads, advertising your seminars and workshops online. And that event management also includes some waitlisting, waitlisting functionality. So for example, if you can fit 20 in the boardroom, the 21st person registers, they'll go on an automated waitlist. Central to all of this is our cloud document management. It's fully versioned. What I mean by that is each time the document's saved, the latest version is on top. When we go into the document management, I'll show you what that looks like. We have an auto archive, which is set at a folder level. So you set the time period, for example, 60 months, five years. When no document in that folder has been touched in that time frame, that file, that file is automatically archived off. It's still available and indexed, but it's in a separate section. We have document workflow. So it's designed for uh, perhaps you have team members that you don't wish to have published documents to clients or that to, you wish for a team members to create content for you but not actually publish it to the client without it being reviewed. So based on the status of the document as to how that document workflow flows through the system uh, onto the appropriate person, perhaps a partner for final review signing and publish, publishing to the client. That way you're the workflows that you um, currently have in place may be that the letters are prepared and they're physically printed and go to the partner and he signs them so we're emulating that in an electronic format. <coughs> Create and manipulate PDFs which of course you can do in your PDF software that you have already but we can also do that with inside CDM. We have a Microsoft Office add-in which allows you to operate in Outlook and save um, emails from there into CDM to work in Word, Excel and PowerPoint where you can retrieve and add the saved documents into CDM, adding the full set of metadata. You can create documents from templates, so all of your existing templates that you're using can be uploaded into Nimbus CDM and mail merge there. Every word of every document is fully indexed and that search facility is right throughout Nimbus and I'll show you um, in a number of places during today's demonstration how that works. What I'm going to do now is we're going to become, go into the live demonstration. I have a demonstration firm, Travis Smith and River, and Travis Smith and River has a client called June Robinson. So right now we're going to become June, and June's going to receive an email. Let's see. Okay, 
So June receives this email from Travis Smith and River, which is saying, oh, we have an online questionnaire. June thinks, okay, what do they want to know? I've got half an hour, I'll, I'll fill it in. So June clicks the secure link, it then asks her for her username and password, which June selects when she receives the welcome email when you first implement Nimbus. Depending on how June answers the question as to what sub-questions you get. As mentioned, these are all customizable. This is just a generic checklist that we have created based on the form type. Um, we have the option to answer questions. There are freeform text box. And the ability to drag and drop files or for June to browse her own system and select the files that she wishes to support that question. Okay, and if she decides she doesn't want that one. So June can move through the checklist. So these systems just need to be set up once. And then the system will continually resend them where they're we're just going to close this, which will save it where it is. The follow-up book still continue to run until that call to action is complete. So it's saying to June, she's got five new files, so June can have a look at that, letting her know she hasn't read those. We're now moving into the My Documents area. We have, June has two entities. So we work on the principle that each individual human being has a single login where they have transparency over all of the entities that they need to transact upon. So we can see what, under to Travis Smith and River, we can see the documents that June has sent to Travis Smith and River. June can upload a document here, so she can attach it to a checklist, or June might be the type that every month when she receives her rental statement, she straight away uploads it and sends it in. The documents that have come from Travis Smith and River, so I'll just wrap that one up a bit, tidy it up a bit. Um, we can see we've got a bit of a traffic light system here. The yellow highlight is saying, hey, um, June, you haven't looked at this document yet. A blue tick tells June that she's viewed that document and a green tick, not only had it been viewed, it's been downloaded as well. Okay, so let's open up this document. Jink and see. It's gone. Right. Every word of every document is fully indexed. So this is up on the main menu. So we can type in part of a word and we want to include the file name. And I'm going to search for the document. We've found a carrot cake recipe. It's just happened to be saved in there for June. June can download that as well. My web forms is a list of all of the web forms that June's been sent. This is the one we were just working on, so June could open that up and continue working. Newsletters is an area where you would share um, IP. So instead of emailing the newsletters, we want your clients, when they think of your firm, to think, well, if it's from the firm, it'll be in the firm's portal. I've got an old appointment here. I'll just use an old one. So. June had wanted to talk about a new truck. So that would have triggered an invitation through to Jackie, the accountant. We've developed a library of videos to assist your clients in using the Nimbus portal should they require assistance. My details. This is June's contact information as it appears in your practice management system. If June need, made a change or an update here, it would trigger a notification to your database administrator. So then that would trigger another workflow within your firm. June has opted to use a photograph of her signature as a visual representation that documents have been signed. At the time of setting up her signature, June also selects a PIN number. If taking a photo of her signature and following the step-by-step -step instructions, as the first time a client's asked to sign a document, this step through that is too hard, June can use a script signature or a digital document stamp, all of which comply with Australian and international privacy standards legislation. Legal are the terms and conditions of use. That's the client workspace or what the client end user interface would look like. Not would look like, does look like. 
Now June's receiving some more correspondence from Travis Smith in River that's saying this is what an example of what document sent for signature could look like. So there's the tax return and we've got two documents to sign. So June thinks, all right, I'll sign the ELD. So she clicks the link, taking me straight in and she signs the document. You can have a signature block on your ELD if you want to. Apply the signature. Do you wish to sign again? No. PIN number. No, it doesn't need witnessing. So that document's been signed and returned to Travis Smith and River for processing. Now we'll have a look at some of the notifications. So the file that I uploaded, so this is a notification to Jackie, to the accountant at Travis Smith and River. So it's let her letting me know that there's a new file there. So as you can see, there's no um, financially sensitive information in this notification. It's just directing me and without the login, then obviously without my username and password, no one can get in. So now I'm going to log in. And it'll take me straight to the home page. So now we're inside the firm portal. <laughs> First is the welcome email. We have the client history button. So everything that's taken place on this particular entity in the portal, whether it be by client or employee, so there could be multiple team members within your firm accessing that entity, and there could be multiple client contacts. All of this is a client grid. It can be searched and sorted. You can say, okay, I want it to show me everything that's been deleted by the client. You can run those sorts of queries. I'm going to move into the client documents area now. And it looks a little bit different to the firm side. So these are exactly the same documents. So it's from the client to the client displayed. We've just got it displayed differently. I can break it down. So all our subfolders are there. You can have as many or as few as you want. And the green folders are the current folders or the document management folders. So I've got this little field published shown. So of course, some of our documents that appear in document management are going to be published documents, but not all. Now we have a number of views and I prefer this grid view and we can decide which columns we want to display and we can switch modes so we can have a thumbnail view or we also have a gallery view and that can be your view and you can decide how you want to show it. I personally, I like the grid view. But let me know if you don't. And what I like about this is that you know everything's listed, you can do sorting, there's um can filter on each of those. So an example here. So first of all, folder properties. That's the archive I talked about. We could prevent publishing, restrict access, all of that sort of stuff. So if I wanted to um, sort through this, I want to sort by work papers. This is some custom metadata to have added to the document. You know, and I could even get go so far as to, you know, application type, just show me the Excel spreadsheets if you're looking for something. So that then once that's there, you can apply, further filter the information down. You can then save that view. So you can go in and say, okay, well, that's my WP16 view. And then you can retrieve that view. You can share that view with others as well. So there's so many different ways to navigate your way around the documents. Every word of every document fully indexed, so at this point I can view the current client or I could select the client group. I can search a content search, which is words within the document, or I could do a property search, which is the metadata. So let's have a look at that. So if we were to have a look at the metadata of a document, we've got the standard type, the name of the document, who the client is, um, you know, its location, date, time, who created it. All standard stuff which you'd be used to in your existing document management system. But we can add custom fields. So I've just 
picked a few that I've added. It's totally up to you. You can de define that. You have up to 14, as I understand it. You can also add categories and priority keywords. So, for example, if you'd put together a, a, a good cash flow template for a small retail business, then you might want to add those as priority keywords so that you can search on that to locate that IP and reuse that at a later date. I can add documents to my in tray as well, so I want to pop that into my in tray to work on later on. Where we have the little arrow, that's showing me that there are previous versions of the document. So there we've got the signed PDF, previous version, and a previous version. So that's different versions. The latest is always on top. So with your current system, if you have a, if you mess up a document and you need to retrieve it from last night's backup. None of that needs to happen here. It's all running in the cloud, and we've got the latest document is always on top. So what I might do now is create a document. So I select my location, and I choose New Document. I select my template. I'm going to create an engagement letter in this case. Now I can edit the document within the system. So we've got online Word, Excel, PowerPoint editor, so I can scroll through this. I can make some changes to it should I wish to. Make some changes should I wish to, and I'm going to save and PDF that. So I can change the matter, change the status, which is document workflow status. So you can have a rule, if it's draft, it can't be posted, all of those sorts of things. We can add custom fields and keywords to it at this point. Okay, here's our letter. Now I need to sign it. So I have the signature block embedded. So it's grabbed my signature and put it in there, into the template. Said okay, and nobody needs to witness it. Do I want to publish it? Yes, I'm authorised to publish that document. So that published document has now been signed and published to the client for viewing. So I've created a letter. We can see there are two versions. So when I first created a PDF, it wasn't signed. Then I signed it, and that's the latest on top. And the other document there is the work document. So. Nimbus is a permanent file store, so each document that's created, it can be archived, and we do give you a password if you need to delete anything of the content that you don't wish to have in your system. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop out to Word on the desktop and show you what everything looks like there. So <clears throat> I can save a document into CDM this dialog box so I can decide whether a business folder, there are folders that are internal to the firm, I can select who the client is, I can add metadata, I could even save PDF and publish the document from Word into um, CDM. The other option, the other thing I can do is I can also retrieve documents. So I can look up a particular client, I can search and then I can retrieve the document from here back to my desktop. So we have this pop-up in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Also have the ability within um, what's it called? Within Outlook to save documents. So this is my actual inbox. And let me find someone who's in my database. Here we go. Ryan Davy. I'm, oh, I've already done it. Right click. Anyway, it'll pop up and it identifies that he's from Unicorn Business Solutions. So I can actually save that document, add the metadata and save that into CDM for him. We also have a document view, which is enabling you to, you can search for every document in the system at any point, but you can also um, search if you it was, um, this has happened to me. Oh, I know I created a fabulous spreadsheet. Who was it for? So you could actually sort by type and by date, um, choosing using these fields and to actually find the document that you're looking for. So we've got the full view over everything. We have the archive, which can be searched. Mine's very boring because it's all business pot, business pot, Brisbane pottery supplies. However, you can pull up and filter um, as we did 
in the documents grid, so all of these grids, and to restore a document, it's a matter of locating it and clicking restore. We have some training videos for your team members. Our training is function, functionality training, and it's designed to be trained the trainer. So we would train a key team of two, three, four people, depending on your firm size, teach them all the functionality. You would then go and engineer, re-engineer your business practices around the functionality offered by Nimbus to take advantage of that technology. I'm going to look at myself as a staff member. So team members can have rights assigned to them as an individual, or you can have rights assigned to the group, to a group as a whole. So set up my ID and PIN number for the team members. Now for document management, I've just got a very basic one set here. But for example, when I set a document to final, it should, Debbie, it could notify Debbie. So then Debbie would read the document, sign it if she needed to. So if I was a, a, a CSA preparing documents on behalf of a partner, then I could tick that. I'm going to turn that off because otherwise that messes up and I can't do anything. What I'd like to do now is just create a couple of email jobs or an, an email job to show you how the system can be set and forget. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I've got a grid view for my monthly BAS clients. Wrong button. I'm going to create an email job. And it's BAS and let's say they're all the zero SASU clients. So I've got template templated wording here, you can use your own. I've also selected wording for a follow-up. I have a web form questionnaire and that is scheduled. It went on the 30th of March, so if I press send it would go now. So my list and then it was will be followed up on the 17th of April and then every 10 days until the first day of the next quarter they'll receive a reminder. SMS reminders are set at the client contact level so you'll know if your client needs an SMS reminder or not. I'm not going to send that job, there's dodgy email addresses in it, but what I'm going to do is send out a set of documents for signature to Brisbane Pottery Supplies. So again, I'm going to select the template. The standard one's provided with the system, but no doubt you have your own wording and it's very easy to upload all of those. So it's completed documents for signature and return, and let's just say it's an individual this time. <coughs> So I'm going to embed the secure link. So there's the tax return. Now I need to embed the ELD. Now let's just say the ELD, just for fun, hadn't made its way into CDM yet. Let's just say it was somewhere else. So I can select it upload and embed the link all in the one process. And let's just say there was no trust declaration this time. So we can delete that off. It's HTML. You can add your own wording. Okay. I'm not sending a follow-up email, but if I did attach follow-up to this, it would say resending original email from the 6th. And I can say, okay, I want to follow that up in a week and then every three days until such time as the documents are signed and returned. And I'll send that document off, send that email job off. So it's gone. So that gives you, so that's the overview. Thank you very much for your attention this afternoon. I'm going to stop the recording now, but if anyone uh, has any questions, please pop them in the chat box.